In a previous video, I showcased this Tetris Micro Arcade. I took it apart and I discovered that in the top right hand corner here, there are four positions for a zero ohm resistor or a link to connect the pads together. And depending on which pair of pads were connected would control which game was loaded when you powered this thing on. That gave me the option of, when I turn it on, loading Tetris, which is what it's supposed to. It works fine. Isn't that nice? Or the hidden game, the other game that was in this that you couldn't normally access, which is Qbert. In the comments to that video, somebody suggested that instead of adding a, a switch up here that's you know bulky and going to get in the way of things, I could have just run wires from these pads here over to the different buttons in the game and hold down one of those buttons while powering the whole thing on. And that is how I could select the game without needing to add some kind of external switch like this. And I thought that was a great idea, so I went out and got my hands on a Pac-Man micro arcade to do exactly that. But I ran into a problem. When I ran wires from the same set of pads that we see in the Tetris over to these buttons here and then held a button down while I turned it on, I discovered the game doesn't turn on. Only until after you release the button does it turn on. And no matter what button I held down or how I connected this thing up, Pac-Man would always load. The check that it does, that the, the microcontroller in this game does, to see which game is being selected, occurs after I release that button. While the button is held down, the game will not turn on. So the trick of wiring these pads to these buttons was not going to work. And I was a little frustrated at that, so I've set this aside for a little while, and after a couple of weeks, I just got frustrated. I couldn't come up with any clever solution. So what I ended up doing in the end is I, I took some magnet wire. Magnet wire is a very thin copper wire with an enamel coating on it. I took some wire, some enameled wire, connected them to the four pads up at the top here, and one wire to the set of bottom pads here, because all four of those pads are connected together ran the wire all the way down and out this micro USB port here around the back to a four position dip switch which I just glued on with hot melt glue because why not at this point I just wanted something working I didn't care how messy it was and just a quick clarification here uh, the top four pads those are all common together, meaning they're all connected together, so I only have one wire coming off of those. And that one wire will connect to all four uh, pins on one side of this four position dip switch. And then the lower four pads, I have one wire coming out from each pad, and each wire is going to its own pin on the top side of this dip uh, switch, this four position dip switch. What this is going to allow me to do is depending on which switches I turn on here will control which game starts up. So if I turn on just switch one, it would be the equivalent of just uh, a connection between just the, the first position of these uh, four uh, pairs of pads here. So with that, I can select between the different games that are built into this system. Now the Tetris had two games. This had a little bit of a surprise though, let me show you. So in these this position here, I get regular old Pac-Man. So that's exactly how it's supposed to be. If I turn all the switches off, I get Ms. Pac-Man. Now if I change the two middle positions to on, like so, I get Space Invader. So now I'm up to three games for the price of one.
But yet, there's one more game. I have Galaxian. Now you may have noticed that every game that I selected, I had to turn two switches on in order for the game to be selected, except for Ms. Pac-Man. I can also just turn on a single switch, but what I get there is I get, in this case, Pac-Man, except it's using a different audio. The audio is intended for something that with a more traditional speaker, whereas this device here, to keep it really thin, has a piezo speaker in it. So really only high-pitched frequencies uh, or noises work, which is why it sounds the way it does uh, in the other versions of the game. But now here, it sounds virtually silent because it's trying to use a uh, uh, broader range of frequencies for the noise, a lot of lower frequencies that the piezo speaker just isn't really capable of. And if I can get lucky here and find the right combination, there's one more little hidden gem. I get a little checksum, a little uh, CRC check, a little self-diagnostic to make sure that the, the ROM that is in the microcontroller is okay, that nothing's broken. This sort of thing is probably what they would use after the PCB was manufactured, but before they selected the game that was going to be played on this PCB, they would put it into this mode. And just to check to make sure that the, uh, the programming for the microcontroller was correct. So there we have another hacked micro arcade. The nature of the hack is similar to how I modified this Tetris micro arcade. It's just a matter of connecting wires up to these pads in the top right hand corner and running those wires to a switch. For the Tetris arcade, I put the switch up here at the top and it's only a single switch because I'm switching only between two games. For the Pac-Man, because there are four games on it, I'm running the wires out the bottom to a dip switch that I have glued onto the back. If you do happen to pick up a micro arcade, it could be one of these or it could be of the, uh, any of the others that are out there, and you do modify it, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it, especially if it's a micro arcade that I haven't modified. And you know, if you could talk a little bit about the nature of the uh, what what modification you used, how you applied it, and what games are on it, what. How many uh, uh, games did you find on your micro arcade? That would be, I think, very useful information for anybody else looking to modify their micro arcade. So I hope you found this useful. Again, I'd love to hear if you apply this modification yourself. Please leave a comment letting me know if you did. I'm very curious to see how other micro arcades are hackable and what games, what hidden games they might contain.